Hey everybody, so a lot of people have asked me about the filler, you know, what we're using, how we're using it, why we're using it, and uh, the different consistencies that they're seeing me use in the video. It's actually all the same filler. Uh, I buy this specific lightweight body filler in bulk. You know, I buy like eight or 10 of these at a time. Um, so I get kind of a good deal on it. Um, and since we're doing prototyping stuff, it doesn't necessarily matter how much we use other than, you know, it does cost money. So uh, I just kind of want to run through what we do with this filler and why. Um, and hopefully that'll explain some of the uh, questions that I've gotten. Hopefully this will help answer those. So when this comes from the factory, it's a pretty thick product. And, you know, obviously that works great on vertical surfaces or on your first buildup. Um, you know, your first coat, but when you start to get into your second or third coat, you really want it to be a little bit thinner and you want it to kind of self level. So that way when you, you're done squeegeeing it out, that it almost kind of settles down on its own and you don't have to do quite as much sanding to get it finished up. So what we like to do is we add about 10 ounces of liquid polyester resin. We just dump it right in here and then I stir this and stir this uh, two or three minutes until it has this real nice, uh, like a cake batter consistency is what I like to call it. And the nice part about that is, like I said, in your final coats, it's almost like a glazing putty or, or something that will self-level. And you can actually see it'll self-level here even in the container. Um, it gives you a good idea of you know how it works and, and why it works a little bit better thinned out. Now, if you're doing a vertical surface, that would make this kind of hard to work with because it'll want to sag or fall off of the part. So really, I only use this in a thin final coat or on a flat, hor you know, horizontal type surface. The vertical ones, it makes it a little bit harder. I probably wouldn't thin it out quite as much, maybe 50% of that ratio. So, you know, maybe five ounces of resin to a gallon of this filler. Now, I don't know if that's recommended by the manufacturer. I'm sure it's not to add, uh, you know, resin to it. But essentially, you know, this filler is made of resin and like a talc powder. So essentially it is the same stuff um, but I'm changing the ratio to make it a little bit thinner. Now, like I said, if you were doing a, a concourse restoration or a special car where you're gonna plan on keeping this filler on there, you know, follow the directions on the label. Um, but if you're doing some prototyping stuff where the longevity of the product doesn't matter, this works perfect. So I hope this answers some of the questions. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. So what I'm doing here is just adding some aluminum tape in the gap between the fender flare and the flare that's on the door and that will allow us to spread filler across the part on the door and if it gets on to the part on the car um, it'll release from that tape and that'll kind of be what's going to set up our door gap here. If you're used to working with filler you can tell that this stuff spreads really nice and easy and that's because we added that resin to it. I'm sort of working on the front fender and the back fender separately and that allows the front one you know to have time to cure while I'm laying the filler on the back one and then while the back one's curing I can come back and sand the front one so you'll see I'm gonna kind of bounce back and forth between the front and the rear flare until they're both finished I recently picked up this little cordless sander they call a file sander and it's really nice because it reaches into small areas it's more or less a tiny belt sander Now I didn't apply any tape at the top part of this flare and you can see I'm cutting it apart with a little air saw and the reason I did that was because I wanted to make this gap really nice and tight and so I just went ahead and spread filler between the flare portion on the door and the flare portion on the back fender and then cut it apart. Um, it created a really nice gap at that point so once we got it open I could hand sand that kind of out to be you know the eighth inch gap I was looking for.
I don't mind getting a little bit of body filler dust on me and even a little bit of fiberglass isn't too bad, but when I get into actually cutting fiberglass or grinding heavily, I definitely suit up with a full suit. Um, the suit that I'm using here is a shoot suit and I actually find them to be a really nice suit that's breathable and uh, you can purchase those online. Now I'm looking for a perfect gap from the flare to the fender and so I'm going to go right up against the body and paint here and that's because I'm going to take molds and I want these flares to fit absolutely as close to perfect as possible. Now this primer that I'm using is a high build polyester primer and it kicks off, uh, you know, it's cured with an MEKP, um, just like fiberglass resin. I like this because you can put it on very thick, you can put it on with a brush or you can spray it on. In this instance, I'm gonna brush it on because I wanna fill a bunch of pinholes and I also don't wanna have to mask off the entire car just so I can do this one fender flare. So it's gonna be easiest for me just to get this mixed up and brushed on. As you can see, this container is used and uh, it was pretty thick, so it took me probably a good five minutes to get it mixed up with a drill because like I said, this stuff is really heavy so it settles into the bottom and uh, it takes a good stir. And I also, uh, I was attempting to tint this. I thought maybe I could make it sort of red, um, but with the filler being a dark gray, it kind of turned into pink and so I added a little black just to kind of darken it up. Um, so although the tinting didn't really work, it was something I wanted to try out. So I went ahead and added a little bit of pigment to it. Um, so you're going to notice that the primer color ends up being almost a sort of a purple shade. I used a brush and just went ahead and brushed on this front fender flare, but the camera battery apparently went dead. And so I didn't get any footage of that. Um, but there is some footage here later on of me doing that. On these big flat sections, it's really hard to use a DA or, you know, a hand sander you can definitely use, but it really wears out your arms. And I happen to have one of these air files, they call it, and it's like a probably about 10 inch long piece of sandpaper. And, you know, it's an air powered sander and it sands really flat long distances. So if you had to do like a big panel on a car or something that you needed really flat, these work out pretty well. So you'll see me using this quite a bit while we're working on the rocker panel uh, side skirt area. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't sure I wanted to spend the money on this file sander, but it has come in really handy, especially on this job with all the tight little weird spots I had to get into. And it wasn't that expensive, I would definitely buy one of those again. So after some hand sanding and sanding with the DA and sanding with that little file sander, you know, we've got this area back here pretty much finished up and I'm pretty proud of this door gap. That's going to look really nice when these panels are finished and, uh, you know, almost looks like a factory door gap. Well, now that we got the main part of the bodywork done, it's time to trim off the rest of that kind of flashing, that extra fiberglass around the flares. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do a little bit of filler work and we're gonna put this in primer. Um, this kind of the last step before the primer is, uh, you know, just cutting everything down, making sure it fits nice against the car. 
and uh, getting it ready for that primer. You're probably noticing that I'm actually using a 90 degree grinder and that has a two inch um, Rolox style disc on it, uh, which I believe is like a 40 grit. And what I'm doing is bumping that the edge of that disc up against the actual body of the car and then just kind of sanding downward to cut that fiberglass off. And it makes it so that I know I'm not going to cut through the car itself and I can still cut through that fiberglass. There's definitely different ways that you could do this if you were trying not to damage the paint on the car, but I plan to repaint the entire car after I get the body kit fitted, so I'm not worried about scratches or you know even taking paint off the car at this point. It's amazing how much it transforms when you start to take the tape off. You can really see the body kit better against the car and get a good idea of the shape. And it's kind of rewarding to see it at this point too. Once again, we're back to using the high build polyester primer and you can see now I'm going to add the MEKP which I measure in this little graduated cylinder and then I just give this a quick stir and we're ready to apply it right to the car. Brush it on once more and that just makes it easier as I said before I don't have to go mask off the entire car. I can just quickly brush this on and fill all the little pinholes and put it on as thick or as thin as I want. I'm probably gonna do about two coats over this whole entire thing. Because this primer is polyester based and uses MEKP as the hardener, it's much like fiberglass resin where the temperature will affect it as well as the time. So. Today it's about 85 degrees in the shop and I know with how much hardener I put in there I have about 10 to 15 minutes uh, maximum working time before it will harden. Now if I was just to leave this whole container sit on the counter it would harden up in the cup. Um, so it doesn't matter how thick you put it on it will actually harden faster the thicker it is just like working with fiberglass resin. Another important note with MEKP catalyzed uh, primers, you know, any kind of polyester primer, anything like that, um, even epoxy primers, the longer they sit, the harder they get. So, you know, tomorrow this will be hard enough to sand. If I waited another week, it'll even be a little bit harder still. So it's much like fiberglass resin once again, where, you know, it gets harder um, as time goes by. And there will be a point where, you know, it doesn't get any harder than that. but. If you wanted to sand it and make it a little bit easier on yourself, you'd want to do it in the first couple of days of applying it. As with all of our videos, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. I try to respond to anybody who leaves any messages. All right, so now everything's been coated and I just need to let this dry. I'm gonna flip the car around so that I can get the other side uh, finished up and then put in primer as well and then we're going to come back through block sand all of this out I'm probably going to even wet sand it down get it nice and smooth and then I'm going to move on to the back bumper and get all of that body work done so stay tuned everybody if you have been following the build um, I appreciate it I appreciate all the likes and the comments they help drive our traffic which obviously helps us in our revenue so thanks again to everybody who follows the build and I'll see you guys on the next one hope you enjoy the video